look at um, the build bit you know, as well. We're doing a documentary called Upside Down. Kind of looks at the world being kind of all kind of perverted and upside down. Banks destroying my, you know, food nexus is unhealthy. Um, so tell us a little bit. You've been covering kind of. You're known as a resource for build up conferences. So, so you you seem to have a lot of knowledge about them. You've been following them for a lot of years. So can you tell us a little bit of how long you've been following the build up meetings and what is your kind of pattern? What have you recognized? Thirty six years. I first became. Intensely interested in Bilderberg in April of uh, 1975. It's been 20 happy years for the establishment of press. Big papers, small papers, back positions on the of newspapers. The editor of the Marshall David News was voted up in July of And that was about the newspapers in April. In 1975, I found myself in Washington being interviewed by Willis Carto, who was a college self treasurer. He was, uh, he was very naughty. He uh, was a right wing uh, organization. They had a bunch of newsletters that were converted into weekly uh, newspapers. My job was to get the spotlight, which was the forerunner. American Free Press. But during that interview, he asked me what I thought about Bilderberg. I thought he thought about Bilderberg trees. I was about. So he gave me a folder and he's taking with me. She included some of the few clippings I had at the time. I asked Bilderberg to be Most importantly, uh, two heavy calls written two days straight by the late great Elizabeth Decker, international, widely syndicated. Uh, columnist. And he had gotten a tip from one of his readers that funny things were happening a little while ago in Chapman Island, off the coast of Georgia. Uh, the year was 1977, three years after the Bilderberg started calling himself Bilderberg. I came to California. And unlike uh, Drew Pearson, he just did a Russian trip. He flew down uh, to the area of Chapman Island. Climbed a high tree, got his binoculars, and identified a lot sight in world travel. Many of the uh, high officials, heads of state from Europe, high officials in the White House in Washington, Congress, uh, secretaries of war, treasury, uh, secretaries of defense now, uh, treasury, Congress, uh, and international financiers, Rothschild. <laughs> Just uh, raised the question. He did not, did not know they called themselves. But in these two heavy columns, just raised the question why are these well figures gathered by this book? It has occurred to me uh, in rereading this, which I uh, read when I was a small boy, but West of Patrick since I was six years old. But at the time, I thought that was interesting and it passed my mind. I read it again and asked myself how, after 20 happy years with daily newspapers, with wire machines, with clattering, not here, with reporters all over the world, we don't know a thing about Milk Earth, there's no reporting. If 120 film stars or 120 football players gathered behind closed doors and uh, behind armed guards, sealing off the whole resort, the uh, press would bust its butt trying to find out what's going on with 120 movie stars, 120 football players. No curiosity at all when 120 of the world's uh, uh, leaders uh, meet secretly. Yeah, maybe it's just a birthday party for David Rockefeller. <laughs> They'd like to uh, believe that. In fact, a couple of years ago, they put out newspapers of, media, of, of positions. A lot of fun teasing over that one. And a photograph of the alleged physicians. It was a Bilderberg meeting. Uh, they made such an ass themselves on that one. I don't think they'll try it again. There's so much laughter at that. Uh, but why do they come to locations that can be accessed by the public? Well, they try to the place very difficult to access by the public. That's why it's always a resort. Like, like you see uh, here in St. Marie. Uh, Still, they could meet on a lonely island. Right. With no airport. A lot of the girls in the baby bottom of house. Exactly. Or yes, one so, of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. So is that to show strength? 
Well, they've always won their meetings to be secret. You have outraged that anybody even knows that they exist. But they have a website now. Uh, don't believe that. Uh, they, they'll have one for uh, a short period since the uh, heavy attention by the, the large newspapers that you write are uh, in the Guardian and the uh, Irish Times and other newspapers to bring such pressure you have to talk about. Yeah, if I called them, they asked about it. I'm going to have a press conference and release the summer. Go to our website. I said, oh, well, I better hurry because your website's not last very long. You don't have them unless you have to pop up the list. Uh, now they say all that on, uh, to the nice man on the phone. I'm not sure if they can. So what, I mean, I've asked today one of the guys that came out of the Builder Conference. Is there any important thing discussed? And you said, bet you, yeah. So. Uh, yes. Uh, what, what is important to them, too, of course, is uh, uh, having wars. Wars are a lot of fun when you're the son of a smoke stack industry. You still need people for wars. Well, they, uh, they don't fight them. Uh, quite true. My rationale about Bill Burns is that all these years we've got to get population control. In 30 years, the planet will be too small. We'll not have enough Earth. Well, one way to control the population is to spill the life of our young men and our women. That way, you reduce the population. And you got such a heavenly rationale. And you also make more money for us. Because when you uh, go to war, you know, you just, uh, making tanks and planes. <laughs> and, uh, that is a scandal that caused that original Bill of Burger to be expelled. His, his drive goes down. Well, he, um, I'm still like the mother of Russia, the two sons said, if my sons didn't want wars, it wouldn't be wars. I do that. In fact, uh, there's a. When I did for that, she said that. Uh, Rothschild family dating back to uh, when the Rothschilds were. Uh, the uh, Rye Fields in Germany, back before we had a lot of first names. And uh, you were known by your trade. That's why they actually the Smiths and Johnsons. Uh, there must be more to it, right? I mean, um, I, I can. Uh, oh, there uh, were having uh, secret meetings long before the conversation. It's just for some reason that uh, hotel in Ustrebeck, they decided to call themselves Bill Burkholz and eat Bill Burkholz out. I think we decided you had to uh, have a more regular meetings along with their smaller group meetings, which we also have. Uh, like the one in Mars? <laughs> uh, well, what I'm saying is like, what's wrong with people? What's wrong with people? Uh, one thing, we have two generations of uh, educated idiots. I have no physicians, I have no lawyers. I've never read a book in their lives but fun. They read their textbooks as a, as a chore because they won't practice medicine. You know, or other men of medicine. And they never read Huckleberry Finn. They never read Little Women Have a Curse that will be best died. Never read a book for fun. And, and they don't read newspapers. That's why uh, I remember when Martian had five newspapers, uh, now it has two. Uh, New York had about 15 newspapers, uh, and everybody read. In fact, one good demonstration of that, in the 1950s, the late limited Washington Times Herald, who curled the Congress paper, had a feature in those old eight color format days, and the left side of the page went every day. It was an acquired photographer and girl. Her name was Jacqueline Bovert. We had no idea she was a feature first lady, but she would ask a question, a question of the day. Uh, of the world of national affairs. And long before diversity became politically correct, she deliberately would balance it out, typically be a lawyer, a businessman, maybe a physician, a sheet metal worker, a cab driver, and maybe a shoeshine boy. She would, uh, and all of them answered. They didn't agree, of course, in their answers necessarily, but their answers showed that they reached their opinion from an informed position. Uh, television was brand new thing then. Uh, great tool. Yeah. Uh, uh, in those years, the little black and white set, the blue screen on the top big piece of furniture, didn't come until two for young. There must be, like, the thing is, of course, wars are need to be fought for them, right, to make money. Um, but imagine there's a war nobody joins in. It would be quick. Well, but people seem to be still believing in the message they're saying.